All right, guys, I'm gonna let you watch me uh, paint this fender. And we'll see how it, how it turns out.
color on it. I'll wait till it dries and then I'll decide what we got to do next. Uh, doesn't look too bad. Don't see any runs yet. But, uh, got a few uh, overspray problems. <laughs> <laughs> a little strong in here. Uh, this is the grill. It's ready to go back on. And I got these side panels done now. <coughs> I put this one on earlier today. Goes right there and the fender bolts on to that panel. And the uh, grill. The grill sits right on top of that. And once that's all in then I can put the exhaust up. And, uh, well, got to put the fender on. Fender on next, and then the final assembly. So, we'll go there. Okay, guys. Um, this is where my video um, audio went uh, haywire on me. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I didn't turn something on, I guess. So, uh, I guess I was just trying to explain. I don't remember what I was talking about here, but uh, I'm getting ready to actually put the the front grill uh, onto the vehicle so I was just explaining some of the minutiae involved with that so uh, we'll move on to the next thing here in a second and again I didn't have the sound turned on for this one either so uh, uh, what I'm explaining here is I put these side panels on. They have to go on first in order for the grill to go on next. Um, and it was a fairly complicated um, arrangement to get that all in there because the, this cable uh, that runs through it goes up to the headlights and then the support bar that comes out to the fender. And then the fender attaches onto the side of that and the grill attaches there. And I'm pointing to the... Uh, there's a pin that goes in that uh, hinge. Uh, there's an upper and a lower part to that that's uh, attached to the grill. And there's a pin right there that uh, holds that, that piece in place there, as well as bolts along the side. So it's uh, <laughs> kind of an ordeal to get all that lined up and, and get that pin in there. Um, but it's... It's in now, so we're good to go. Uh, the next uh, element uh, I think we've got to show you will be the about putting the uh, top on. I mean, not the top, but the uh, the grill. And that's the cable that raises and lowers the headlights. That fits up into the headlight housing on the fender. And then that other wire coming out. Uh, is the wire for the the headlight bulb so i don't know why we're in here oh i'm showing you the crank okay that's what we're doing so all right we're uh getting ready to drop the grill in place uh, i wrapped some cardboard around the far ends of the grill to kind of protect the uh, firewall area from scratches and so forth so it was uh, it's kind of a heavy grill and uh, uh, trying to manhandle it would have been impossible I think to try and put that on by yourself but uh, with the help of the gantry I was able to easily uh, lower it into position and uh, get it to where you could uh, attach all the, the bolts I think there's four four bolts that attach to that side panel and then the pin that slides in down at the back end on each side there's a pin that lowers or uh, fits into that hinge 
affair that I pointed out a little earlier. Um, and I was in no big rush to try and get it on uh, without, you know, I want to make sure we didn't mess anything up, and scratch the paint or anything. So it was just easy, easy peasy, slowly lowering it into, into position. Um, in this next clip, I want to show you why the uh, pin is uh, used to lock this uh, louver onto the cowl. There's, uh, the, you can see in this video right here, the, uh, we're off about an inch from lining up with the uh, uh, part that's attached to the cowl <coughs> so that the uh, louver can uh, uh, be secure there. And then there's four more bolts that uh, uh, hold it down in the forward position. But uh, I just wanted to show you this little clip right here to let you see that the as that pin drops in right there. I'm going to put it in the hole and it just drops in. But it's not lined up yet. But anyway, that's it. Hello, my friends. Welcome to my shop. My name is Steve. Uh, today we're getting real close to uh, getting everything painted. We've got the last two fenders uh, are prepped and ready to go. Um, I've given them a, a first coat of uh, paint and then we went over 1500 and sanded them. Got them all the little blemishes out, we hope. Um, some of my runs. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to show you um, uh, a little bit of the spraying of the fenders and uh, the other day I, I did a video on uh, another fender I sp sprayed it for you um, but I thought maybe I'd take you over to the uh, mixing table where we stir the paint and uh, I'll show you how I put it together over there so let's <laughs> my go mess it's my mixing area where I've got all my paint and stuff supplies I thought I'd just show you quickly uh, this is a uh, the spray gun I've been using is this uh, Master Pro Series, uh, and the, the nice thing about it, it comes with uh, three different nozzles, so you can, depending on what kind of paint you run through the gun, you can adjust your uh, needle and uh, spray with the different uh, nozzles tips. You got the, uh, let's see here, four or four. Four of them, actually. I guess it comes one, and then you got three extra ones. Uh, 1.3 millimeters installed, and then you get a 1.4, 1.5, and 1.8. Um, I've been using the 1.8. Uh, it's probably too too big, but uh, it seems to work okay. Uh, it's a gravity feed, and uh, seems to work better. I don't know. I've got some old Devilvis spray guns that are the suction type but moving on to mixing the paint um, I use uh, Nissan 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 uh, machinery and equipment it's a uh, fast dry enamel uh, and I had it custom mixed uh, for the original color of the car, uh, which is uh, cord ivory. So let's open up the can and be first step here. Now I mix four parts, two parts, one part. Um, so it's eight to one with this hardener. Use this uh, acrylic enamel catalyst hardener. Um, so make sure we got this good. It does like to settle out. Mix up a full gun today. Let's 
eight, two, and one right here. And we'll go five, five parts, five parts. dump it out of the can I uh, took an old uh, punch bowl ladle I guess you'd call it and uh, added a little handle on it so I can uh, dip it out I guess I'll put it on this side and you'll be able to see it a little better what I'm doing so I like to uh, There, there. Yeah, let's see how close we're getting here. Let's see. Oh. Okay, so we're at four we need to go. Just a little more. Good. Yeah, let that let that drain off a minute. And now I want to get these are uh, <laughs> mid temp reducer glasses are fogging up. some more. Won't this be enough? All right, where are we at here? Okay, over here. Oh boy. Well, that's all I can. to me well it's not bad but I think I'd like to go a little bit thinner Hmm. 
All right. Uh, I keep uh, I keep acetone in the bottom of the can so it stays uh, um, fresh. Doesn't dry out anything. If there's any residue in there, it'll help you keep it out. So, and we'll use this for the for the cleanup. So I'm going to say it, set that aside for now. And filter. Right there. Just a little more. 